Normally the drive home from Las Vegas to Los Angeles takes about three and a half to four hours. While most people do the drive fast, my dad and I decided to take the entire day and see how many fun stops we could see along the way. If you want to have a unique road trip home from Las Vegas, here are 10 great stops you can see and let us know what we left off in the comments. After arriving in Vegas the previous night, we stopped at the Bellagio Fountains and had dinner at Hell's Kitchen. My dad did a Hell's Kitchen food review for our Patreon, so check out the link in the description if you're interested. The next morning we woke up and checked out of our hotel which was the Flamingo and started the drive back to Southern California. Our first stop brought us to the famous Las Vegas sign in the rain with no other people. We're finishing a Nevada road trip, we stayed the night in Las Vegas and we're heading back to Southern California. I'm going to show you a bunch of stops along the way. From the Las Vegas sign, we headed about 10 minutes south to stop at the Broken Yo Cafe. They're well known for all of their unique breakfast options and their mimosa and Bloody Mary flights. This cafe was started in San Diego and there's a bunch of locations down there, but this is the first location in Las Vegas. I recommend that you pick two of the different Benedicts that they have and that you get a side of one of the sweet items to share. That's one of those breakfast spots that's so filling you don't even need to eat lunch, but it was a great start to our road trip and now we are heading on. Our next stop brought us about 25 minutes south to the Seven Magic Mountains art installation. Almost all of the stops on this road trip my dad had never seen before, so I was excited to show him some of my favorite places on Highway 15. This is stop two on our road trip at Seven Magic Mountains. It's not a very nice day today, it's raining, but it's supposed to clear up as we head south. The benefit though is that there's basically no one at Seven Magic Mountains, and I've never seen that before, so this is pretty cool. Seven Magic Mountains is an art installation created by famed international artist Ugo Rondinone. The installation features seven 35-foot tall rock towers that are situated in the Nevada desert. It's incredibly popular and you'll often find hundreds of people taking pictures with the rocks. It's one of my favorite things to see on this drive as I love the way the neon colors create an interesting contrast to the surrounding landscape. Really interesting. It, it, it would pop against the desert, but it also pops against the clouds. And as you move, the different colors kind of become accentuated as they come to the foreground. It's really interesting. Be sure to give yourself some time to explore this one, and hopefully you get better weather than we did. It is biting cold. It's almost like a sleet out here. But wow, it was cool to see that art installation without any people. I have never seen that before in all the times I've been to Vegas. As you make your way back to the freeway, be sure to stop at Terrible's Roadhouse, which is the largest Chevron gas station in the world. The inside has a ton of fun things that you're going to want to see. Pops, how much do I have to pay you to ride that train? I'll do it for free. <laughs> there ain't oh, no way you can order. fit in there. Oh, out of order, dang. This is nicer than the other one. Hey, can you recreate your famous jump from here? <laughs> wow, I think you got off the ground at least two inches on that one. If you missed your chance to take a photo with the Welcome to Vegas sign, then you can easily do that here. Plus, you can see some awesome cars on display. Pops, I've been waiting for you at the car. What are you doing? It was such a good burn, it left Pops speechless. <laughs> it's a good spot for gas. They have 99 pumps here, lots of bathrooms, things to see inside. Nice road trip stop. Back in the car again, we continued driving and headed towards State Line. On a previous trip, I had gone to Whiskey Pete's to see the Bonnie and Clyde car, so I decided to go back there and find it again. After exploring, I was told that the car was moved over to the Prim Valley Casino across the freeway. I headed over there, and then they told me that it was moved to Buffalo Bills. Eventually, we found the car in Buffalo Bills, but what used to be an interesting attraction with lots of information about Bonnie and Clyde was now just a car that was sitting in the middle of some slot machines. It's still an interesting stop to see the historic car that has 112 bullet holes in it, but without the exhibit surrounding it, it's not as good as it used to be. Leaving Prim, we said goodbye to Nevada and crossed over the state line. We made it back to California. Pops, what's the thing that we do when we cross into a new state? We always have to beep the horn and be goofy when we cross over. <laughs> do you guys do anything when you cross into different states? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. We were in the car for 45 minutes to get to our next spot. I do have to say that I think the desert is beautiful. During the summer it's hot and not that great to drive, but during the winter you can really just enjoy the scenery and the beautiful mountains that surround you. Eventually though we made it to the town of Baker and our first stop at Alien Jerky. 
First off, I love this store. So many cool things to see on the outside with the alien spaceships and cars. Plus the inside has all sorts of things to see as well. It may feel like a gimmick, but I honestly love the jerky here and I always pick up some every time I come by. Pops and I just drove the extraterrestrial highway, so this is close to our heart right now, aliens. All right, all right. This store has been here since 2002 and it used to be a 500 square foot location and now it's over 4,000 square feet. They're also working on building an alien themed hotel in the back and I asked them when it was going to be ready and they told me they weren't sure. I can't wait to come out and stay in the alien hotel though so I hope it happens soon. Our second stop in Baker is right across the street. Giant thermometer. Can't see it but it's down there. The world's biggest thermometer is of course the main stop in the town of Baker. Here's my 6'7 dad standing at the bottom of it. How tall do you think that thermometer is, Pops? Uh, I'll say 150 feet. 134, that was, that was not bad. Be sure to stop into the gift shop where they have lots of drinks that you can purchase and world's largest thermometer related souvenirs. They have shirts and postcards and even books on the area. It's a pretty cool spot to stop by. Even if you don't stop anywhere else on the road trip, you gotta stop for the world's tallest thermometer. If you follow this channel, then you know how much we love coffee. While coffee on a road trip is hit or miss, coffee at home is always consistent with Atlas Coffee Club. Atlas Coffee Club sources the best coffee from over 50 countries around the world and delivers it to your door every month. The coffee comes with information about the country and tasty notes to help you understand the different flavor profiles each coffee provides. The coffee is roasted to order and delivered fresh, and I've been a big fan of the most recent coffee I've gotten from them from Brazil. To piggyback on that, both my dad and I have been Atlas customers for about eight months now. What I really like about it is that the coffee is super consistent. I've basically liked everything that I've received from them. Yeah, I like the coffee too, it's delicious. But one of the things I really enjoy about the service is you set it up for it to come regularly, but you can change it all the time. You can have more come earlier, you can have it come later with a break. Um, and so I really, really like that flexibility in the service they provide. If you want to check it out, you can go to the link in the description where there's a discount code for your first purchase. Now back to the road trip. Leaving Baker was only an eight minute drive to our next stop, that road that everyone always drives by on the way to Las Vegas. If you have the time, Zizek Road is definitely worth getting off on as it's about a four mile drive with a little bit of dirt road to get out to the research center. The drive was passable by a two-wheel drive car when I went, and the views are beautiful looking out over the dry lake bed that's massive and on your left-hand side. We have made it to Zizek's and the Desert Study Center. This is where the parking area is, and we're gonna go explore a little bit. I haven't been here in about five years, and it was closed for a couple years during COVID, so I'm excited to finally get to see it again after a long time. Pops, did you ever think you'd be exploring Zizek's Mineral Springs area? I wanted to see it when I saw your original video five years ago, but uh, yeah, so this will be fun. So the buildings are closed to the public because they're part of the Desert Study Center, but we can do the Lake Loop Trail. This area was once home to a spa and health resort created in the 1940s by a radio evangelist. I'll link to another video on that in the description as that history is definitely interesting to learn about. All that's publicly accessible now is the half mile trail around the lake. Honestly, it's a beautiful area and a great walk and you can see lots of birds playing in the water and a small fountain out in the middle. This is an artificial lake that was created for the health resort, but now it's home to many different birds that live in it. Hey look, Pops found an old boat. I'm looking online trying to figure out what a boat this big would be doing out here. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea what that boat is for. Let us know if you know in the comments. First time I came out here, you could explore basically anywhere you wanted, but it looks like everything is closed off now. This area is actually used as a desert research center for some of the California colleges. That's why you're not able to access any of the buildings. That was a cool stop, well worth the drive out here, even though you could only walk around the lake, it's beautiful. What did you think, Pops? Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful scenery in the background and desert and everything, but just limited. It's just that short walk around the lake. From the lake, it's about a 10 minute drive back to the freeway and then another 40 minute drive to our next stop. Along the way, it's a two lane highway with more beautiful desert views. 
This is Eddie World, which is a great stop for gas or for snacks if you need something. Plus there's a shrine of the LA Lakers in there, but we're heading on to the next stop. Getting off on the same exit and heading north brings you to the ghost town of Calico. This attraction does have a per person cost to visit. Next stop, we're in the Calico ghost town, which Pops has never seen before. It's really amazing that Pops has lived in California for so long and has done so little. <laughs> I took all of my money to raise my son. <laughs> Calico is an awesome stop for the whole family on this road trip and it's a fun place to explore for a couple hours. The history of Calico began in the late 1800s when silver was found in the area. The discovery of silver brought lots of people and prospectors here, creating the town which at one point had a post office, multiple hotels, and multiple saloons. Hey, look, there's something for Pops to stick his face in and he has to decide whether he can bend down enough to be the man or he has to be the woman. <laughs> you won that. Well done. As the price of silver went down in the early 1900s, Calico became a ghost town. There were a few attempts to revive the town, but it wasn't until Walter Knott purchased it in 1951 and decided to restore it himself. That's what Calico looks like back in the old days. His painstaking restoration cost three quarters of a million dollars and turned it into what it is today. It's basically a ghost town with restaurants and stores and a few different rides that you can experience. One of my favorite things is the mine tour, which does cost a few dollars more. I'm not gonna go in it today because Pops was for sure not gonna go in with me, but I have some videos I'll play right here of the last time I went in. The mine is an added fee, but it lets you walk a thousand feet through the tunnel and up out the other side. Along the way, there's some exhibits you can see about what it was like to be a miner. I've never ridden the train before, so we decided we're gonna go for a train ride. Look at this, I pay for Pop's ticket and he chooses not to sit next to me. He goes and sits by himself. More leg room. <laughs> yeah. Well, look at my leg room. The train is also an extra fee, but my dad and I had a lot of fun with it. It's a 10 minute ride that takes you around a small track and is narrated with lots of points of interest along the way. Our conductor was great and pointed out a lot of spots that the narration was talking about. Yeah, it was fun, that'd be great for kids. Yeah, lots of history and yeah, pretty interesting. And there's the Bottle House. The Bottle House is one of the more recognizable buildings in Calico and is popular for photos. Walking up to the top of the ghost town's main street leads to the trail for Lookout Point. That was the last thing that we wanted to do before leaving Calico. Lookout Point is a pretty epic view out over the city and the train we just rode. Very cool. The trail at the top is a little uneven on some jagged rocks, but it's definitely worth it to get the good view. I have to say, today Calico is an actual ghost town, <laughs> but this is a fun place to explore, especially with the family if you're driving. A couple more stops left before we end this video. As you make your way back to the freeway, look to the left and you'll see the large Jenny Rose sign. If you're a Cheryl Crow fan, you may recognize this from her debut album and it used to be for a restaurant that has since closed. For us, it was starting to get later in the day and we still had a couple hours of driving to get back to Los Angeles, so we only had one more stop for this video. This stop was off historic Route 66 and you'll get off in Barstow and then make the drive along Route 66 all the way to Victorville. If the Route 66 Museum in Barstow happens to be open when you're there, you should definitely check it out, but it's only open a couple days a week. We've made it to our last stop of the day, Elmer's Bottle Tree Ranch on Route 66. Last time I was here, the gate was closed, but the gate is open today and it says, welcome, come on in. Elmer's Bottle Tree Ranch is just a classic stop on Route 66. This is always one of my favorite places on the drive. It's so cool just to walk through all this unique art and Elmer's passed away now, but I got to meet him a few times, always such a genuine, awesome human being that just loved creating art and loved people enjoying his art. I wasn't sure what the status of this place was going to be and it was closed last time I went by. According to the website though, it looks like it is now open and you can walk in and then donations are accepted in the back in the large wishing well. 
Hopefully it'll continue to be here for a long time as it's one of my favorite places on Route 66 and on the drive between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. As I walk through here, I'm reminded of our drive on Route 66 that my dad and I had. So I'm gonna find him. We'll chat about that real quick before we end the video. All right, Pops, the Route 66 video has almost 13 million views, which was basically the start of you and me's road trips Absolutely. and all of the videos that we make on this channel now. So as you think about the Route 66 and this awesome place, one of our favorites one on our the favorites. entire drive, what's the first thing that you remember about that trip? It's so hard to nail one thing down, but I think towards the end when we, we went from west to east, towards the end, the uh, museum in Pontiac, Illinois, which kind of had all kinds of stuff about the artist of Route 66, Bob Waldmeyer, that was one of my absolute top spots. You gotta, you gotta stop there if you're a Route 66 person. And for me, I think I remember the um, Blue Well of Catoosa. That was just one of those things that you always saw the pictures of and like I never thought I would actually go visit that. And so being able to see that, how cool it was and historic and fun. Um, but I mean, places like this, like I'll remember so much from that trip as I'm sure you will too. So if you haven't seen that video, go watch it. And it's two hours of your time, but hopefully you enjoy it. Let us know in the comments. And with that, our drive from Las Vegas back to LA is done. We're gonna stop it here because you know all the spots back in the Inland Empire in Los Angeles. Hopefully you enjoyed going on this road trip with us. Let us know in the comments and we will see you on the next one.